Good morning, and welcome to worship here at Grace Lutheran Church in Fremont, Ohio. Our virtual worship online and also available on the radio. Please remember our building remains closed, at least through the month of August, due to the coronavirus. I can't thank you enough for continuing to be safe, keeping yourself safe, your loved ones safe. I also want to thank you for your continued donations to Grace Lutheran Church. Without you, we would not be able to offer all these ministries. You're making such a difference. Thank you. We continue to have our Lyft drive-in service over at St. John's parking lot just a block away. They are at Sunday, 9 o'clock in the morning. If you haven't been to one, they are joyous. I invite you to come and experience this drive-in church together. We're so glad that you are with us this day. I ask that you take a moment to focus your hearts and your minds on Christ Jesus. Our confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, whose steadfast love is everlasting, whose faithfulness endures from generation to generation. Amen. Trusting in the mercy of God, let us confess our sin. Reconciling God, we confess that we do not trust your abundance and we deny your presence in our lives. We place our hope in ourselves and rely on our own efforts, we fail to believe that you provide enough for all. We abuse your good creation for our own benefit. We fear difference and do not welcome others as you have welcomed us. We sin in thought, word, and deed. By your grace, forgive us. Through your love, renew us. And in your spirit, lead us so that we may live and serve you in newness of life. Amen. Beloved of God, by the radical abundance of divine mercy, we have peace with God through Christ Jesus, through whom we have obtained grace upon grace. Our sins are forgiven. Let us live now in hope, for hope does not disappoint, because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. Glorious God, your generosity waters the world with goodness, and you cover creation with abundance. Awaken in us a hunger for the food that satisfies both body and spirit. And with this food, fill all the starving world. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Good morning! It's time for the children's message. Today I have Riley with me, and I think instead of doing the children's message, I think we should make a snack. You know, sometimes I get hungry during the sermon. So today we're going to make a snack, and we're going to make bread in a bag. It's always one of your favorite things to make, isn't it? Yeah. So there are many stories in the Bible that talk about breaking bread and eating bread together. One of my favorites is the feeding of the 5,000. It always amazes me. So Riley, what do we need in our bread today? All purpose flour, three All right. cups. I got it. Three tablespoons of white sugar. Okay, it's right here. Yeast. All right, you have that over there. One cup of warm water. Yep, you have that. Three, te three tablespoons of olive oil and vegetable oil. Yep, right here. And one and a half teaspoon of salt. Yep, right here. Okay, so you're ready to get started. You remember what to do, right? Yep. Can you mix the first couple ingredients together? Uh -huh. Um, How many people do you think, how many people do you think our loaf of bread will feed? The whole all the people in the house. All the people in the house? Can you imagine this one little loaf of bread that we're going to make? Can you imagine that feeding a thousand people? 
No. No. Unless we make a lot. We have to make a lot, right? Yeah. Well, you see, back in Jesus' time, he was with the disciples and he was teaching. And while he was teaching, a large crowd had gathered and it had gone long into the evening and it was dinner time. And the disciples were getting hungry and they said, Jesus, please send them away so we can eat. But Jesus said, no, you should feed them. The disciples didn't have any food. So Jesus told them to search the crowd, but all they could find was one boy with five loaves of bread and two fish. So after the disciples found the five loaves of bread and the two fish, they gave it to Jesus and he lifted it up to heaven, giving thanks and blessing it. And then he gave it back to the disciples and told them to pass it around and feed the people who were there. If we were, if we were together in person this morning and we were able to share our bread with you, there might be enough for you to have a tiny bite. But when Jesus blessed the loaves and fish, the Bible says that there everyone ate until they were full and there were 12 baskets left over. Riley, would you like to cut the first piece of bread? Yes. Go ahead. Do you think that if we took this to share at the church, do you think we would have any leftovers to bring home? No. You're right. This loaf of bread barely lasts us a day. My girls just love it. Okay. So what can we learn from this lesson today? The, the lesson to be learned is that no matter what we have or how little we have, when we give it to God, he will use it and there will be more than enough. I invite you to join me in prayer. Riley, can you fold your hands? Dear Father, just as you used a small boy to feed over 5,000 people, we pray you will use the boys and girls here today to bless everyone they meet each day. Amen. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 14th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. When Jesus heard what had happened, he withdrew by the boat privately to a solitary place. Hearing of this, the crowds followed him on foot from the towns. When Jesus landed and saw a large crowd, he had compassion on them and healed their sick. As evening approached, the disciples came to him and said, This is a remote place, and it's already getting late. Send the crowds away so they can go to the villages and buy themselves some food. Jesus replied, They do not need to go away. You give them something to eat. We have here only five loaves of bread and two fish, they answered. Bring them here to me, he said. And he directed the people to sit down on the grass, taking the five loaves and the two fish and looking up to heaven. He gave thanks and broke the loaves. Then he gave them to the disciples, and the disciples gave them to the people. They all ate and were satisfied. And the disciples picked up twelve basketfuls of broken pieces that were left over. The number of those who ate was about five thousand men, besides women and children. The Gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Our Gospel reading today, we find Jesus with the disciples. And by now, they had already been with him for several months. They've been following him. They've been learning from him. And today, he's going to challenge them. During this time of following Jesus, they had watched him as he healed a leper, as he healed the servant of a Roman centurion. He healed Peter's mother-in-law. He healed numerous people that had evil spirits and various diseases. And they had even seen him raise a little girl from the dead. They had seen his power up close and personal. But now it is late in the day. And they're on a hill out in the middle 
of nowhere. They have a bunch of hungry people on their hands. And the disciples, well, they were pretty practical men. And they suggest to Jesus, send those people home so that they can find food elsewhere. It is then that Jesus says the most unusual thing to them. They do not need to go away. You give them something to eat. Well, that would seem to be a practical solution, except for two facts. Number one, there are 5,000 men beside the women and children, and they don't have anywhere nearly enough food to feed that many people. When I got to looking at all the miracles Jesus had done to that point, we realize what's going on here. Up until this point, Jesus had been doing all the work. He taught the people, he healed them, he raised people from the dead, and the disciples pretty much were along for the ride. But now, it's challenge time. Jesus sets the stage for his disciples. He's given them an impossible situation. He has confronted them with probably around 15,000 hungry people. And he tells these disciples to go feed them. He asks them, how are you going to feed them? How do you answer that? Well, they said, we don't have enough money. Wrong answer. We only have two fish and five loaves. Wrong answer. What's the right answer? The right answer is give Jesus what you have and let Jesus deal with the situation. No matter what you give to Jesus, he is capable of adding or subtracting whatever he needs to get whatever he desires. If we seek Jesus' involvement in our plans, even if we have little to bring to the table ourselves, Jesus will fill in the gaps. His strength makes up for our weaknesses. That is the essence of faith. Three things occurred to me when I read this passage. The first one, God desires to stretch our faith, to challenge us. God wants us to mature in our faith. We find ourselves in situations where there is no way possible that we could do what he's asking. That's what Jesus is doing with the disciples and feeding the 5,000. He had put them in a situation that could only be accomplished if God did a miracle. Hudson Taylor, a missionary, said this, Unless there is an element of risk in our exploits for God, there is no need for faith. If we could do it all by ourselves, what need would we have for God? A good friend of mine, a pastor, decided to start a new idea for ministry. There was lots and lots of conversation. How could we do this? Where would the money come from? He said there was absolutely no way his little church would come up with that much money. But then he thought, wait a minute. If God is in this, why not set the goal high? Because that's what Faith is all about trusting God to do something that we cannot do on our own. He said, we are going to stretch our faith. Because unless there's an element of risk in our decision, there's no need for faith. He always said, follow the Holy Spirit and God will fill in all of the needs. The second lesson that I believe comes from this passage is this story. Jesus' objective was not to feed the 5,000. If that is all that he had in mind, well, he could have sent them home. They didn't need him to give them food. 
they could have gotten their groceries, their meal from somewhere else. When churches do not understand this, they fall into the trap of forgetting why they exist. From the early 1900s to the 1960s, there was a powerful church in Manhattan. It was called Broadway Presbyterian Church. And they were committed to reaching out to people for Christ. And they used every tool in their toolkit to do this, including food kitchens. But from the 60s to the 90s, a little subtle change began to take place in the soup kitchens. Prayers were not offered over meals because they were afraid they just might offend the poor. They no longer tried to convince the homeless to turn to God, to repent of their sinful ways. Over time, they found that the people that came to that soup kitchen came again and again, year after year, with absolutely no change happening in their lives. This church actually changed their membership from about 1,000 down to 120. A once mighty congregation sat with a nearly empty building. Now here's my point, and listen to me carefully because I don't want you to misunderstand what I'm saying here. The church does not exist to feed the poor or to take care of the needy. The church exists to serve Jesus Christ and bring people to salvation. But if the church serves Jesus Christ, it will feed the poor and it will help the needy. Recently, I read a survey they wanted a response to the question, is your church focused on feeding the hungry? I said, no. We do feed the hungry. We do reach out to people who are struggling. But our focus is on serving Jesus Christ. If our center of attention gets off of Jesus and goes to good works, without Jesus being the center of everything, we've lost our very reason to exist. We exist as a church to serve Jesus and to give Him all the glory. That was the purpose of the miracle of feeding the 5,000. To glorify Jesus and to build faith in God. A third lesson. And the feeding of the 5,000 was this. Jesus asked his disciples to be his active followers in this miracle. You remember, up until this time, Jesus has been doing everything. He's been doing all the miracles. But now he tells his disciples, you do it. You give the people something to eat. And how much food did the disciples come up with? Five loaves of bread and two fish, all from a little boy. Jesus takes what the disciples give him and he blesses it. Taking those five loaves and two fish and looking up to heaven, he gives thanks to God. And he broke the loaves. Then he gives it to the disciples and the disciples give it to the people. When everyone had their fill, they collect 12 extra baskets of food left over. Jesus took what the disciples had given him and he multiplied it. Why did Jesus ask the disciples to come up with the food? He didn't need their help. He didn't need the five loaves and the two fish. It was Jesus. After all, all he had to do was clap his hands and the food would have come down from heaven. Why then did he do it this way? He wanted his disciples to be his active followers in his ministry. 
we all need to realize that we all do not need to be preachers to be servants of God. Realize you are a part of the priesthood of believers. And you know that this congregation is so invested in that kind of thinking that you don't need my permission to get into ministry. In fact, you know that the leadership here will do, will do everything we can in order to enable you to do even more. You have realized the privilege that God has given you to be his active partner in ministry. Serving Jesus allows us to mature in our faith until you find ways of ministering for him both inside this building as well as outside. One final note. When God challenges you to do more than you've ever done with your life, you should realize what an incredible opportunity you're being offered. An opportunity of a lifetime. Are you up for the challenge? Amen. Church, let us confess our faith together by using the words of the Apostles' Creed. 
I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Confident of your care and helped by the Holy Spirit, we pray for the church, the world, and all who are in need. You take resources that appear to be meager, bless them, and there is enough. May your church trust that what you bless and ask us to share with the world is abundantly sufficient. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Your bountiful creation offers sustenance and life for all creatures. Protect this abundance for the well-being of all. Reverse the damage we have caused your creation. Replenish groundwater supplies. Provide needed rains in places of drought and protect forests from wildfires. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. You offer yourself to all the nations and peoples of the earth, inviting everyone to abundant life. Bring the prophetic vision to fullness that all nations will run to you and that nations who do not know you will find their joy in you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. You open your hand and satisfy the desire of every living thing. Hear the anguish of tender hearts who cry to you in suffering and satisfy their deepest needs. Bring wholeness and healing to those who suffer in body, heart, soul, and mind. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. You offer freely the fullness of salvation. Give our congregation, Grace Lutheran, such a welcoming heart that our words and actions may extend your free and abundant hospitality to all whom we encounter. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. You gather your saints as one, united in the body of Jesus. Bring us with all your saints to the heavenly banquet. We remember with love and thanksgiving the saints we have known. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. In the certain hope that nothing can separate us from your love, we offer these prayers to you through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always and also with you. I invite you to make the sign of the cross on your forehead or to a loved one sitting near you. And now, neither death nor life, nor angels nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus, God the Creator, Jesus the Christ, and the Holy Spirit the Comforter bless you and keep you in eternal love. Amen. Go in peace. Serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.